Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and where are my big block Aww. Chevy fans? Where are my Boost fans? That's right, this video is combining two very cool things, big block Chevys and Boost, and this was actually done out of necessity way back in the day. The final cool thing, this was maybe my very first big block Chevy build, so let me know in the comments how I did. So I was looking for like lots of torque from a 454 Chevy. I bought a 1977 Crew Cab Dually to use as the tow vehicle for our World Challenge race effort. Shout out to Bernie Van Hammond for putting up with me for all those years. We were taking our Mustang and towing it all across these great United States, but our very tired 454 did not have enough power to tow the race trailer, certainly over lots of these hills. Because it was only running on four or five or maybe six cylinders, what I did to start out with was add a Holly slash Wyan 174 blower on this thing because if you have a motor that's not running very well and is very tired, the first thing that you should do is obviously add boost. But ultimately what this thing needed was a rebuild. So I built a motor to put in this truck with torque in mind. I didn't care really how much horsepower it made, but I wanted to have good low speed power. So that's exactly what I did. But since we already had the blower after this buildup, I also could add that supercharger and because that supercharger was kind of small for this big block Chevy I had to start out and run an even bigger blower all that's in this video and guess what this is only part one because after that we make the motor even bigger so check it out Okay, guys, let's jump right in. As I might have alluded to in the introduction, this was my first big block Chevy buildup, I'm pretty sure, and it came out of necessity. I purchased a 1977 uh, crew cab dually truck we nicknamed Max, as in the Blue Max from the old movie, and we used it to tow our race trailer, our enclosed race trailer, when we were World Challenge racing all across the country. Shout out to my buddy Bernie Van Hammond for putting up with me all of those years, but the motor that was in there, the original 454, very, very tired, probably only hitting right on about five or six of the eight cylinders, and we ended up putting this 174 supercharger, which you'll see, the the, the Wyand, Holly, whatever, uh, uh, single carburetor supercharger on there. We originally put it on the stock motor just so that this motor was strong enough to, with our race trailer, to get us across the country and get over the hills and stuff. But ultimately what this thing really needed is it needed to be rebuilt. And I wanted something that made more torque because we were using it as a tow vehicle. So that's what this that's what this build was. So we started out with a 454. We bored the block 60 over because you know more cubic inches is better. I installed a set of uh, 20 or 22 cc dome pistons in it. We used the factory rods. We used the factory crankshaft because those were still in good shape. We just did a piston upgrade to bring the compression up. When we milled the, uh, we also put a set of 049 factory or factory iron heads and milled them slightly. I think. 15 or 20 thousandths. We uh, put bigger valves in it. They did have some porting done by my buddy Joel way back in the day at competition, I think competition cylinder heads. And um, so the iron 049 heads, you know, they worked out pretty good. They're, they're, they're the kind of the go-to oval port head casting for these big blocks. And they, and they worked out really good in this combination. So we were, again, we were looking for torque. So oval port instead of a rec port up, upgrade, we put a very, very small camshaft in this thing. Again, we're thinking torque. So go small in the camshaft. And in this case, I think I went too small. But the camshaft was a small, and I think that this might have even been an emissions legal camshaft back in the day, and it might still be. This was a crane. It was a 460, 485 lift, a 203, 212 degree duration, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. We also, again, thinking of torque, wanted a dual plane intake manifold. I picked a very small one, an Edelbrock, Performer 2.0. I should have picked an air gap or something, at least an RPM. And we topped it off with a 750 Holly. We ran inch and seven eighths uh, hooker super comp headers with, with mufflers and collector extensions on the dyno. And it worked out fairly well. And what we did was run this motor, run this big block Chevy through a break in cycle. Uh, this thing also had some roller rockers on it. Uh, stock ratio roller rockers. We ran this through a couple of break-in cycles and then started to do some tuning and make some power. And on the first good um, power run, this thing had 34 degrees of timing in it. It made 426 horsepower and 532 foot-pounds of torque. Honestly, I was pretty happy with the torque down low. I mean, we were you know, I had over 500 for a good bit. So that's kind of where we wanted it. Then we did a little bit more tuning on it. Uh, we readjusted the valves after, you know, making some power pulls. 
and then also added a couple of degrees of timing and we were able to whittle away a little bit more power out of it 437 horsepower and peak tor torque was up to 542 foot pounds of torque so again if you take a look at it we get, we're getting over 500 foot pounds and in the 2500 to 3000 range kind of where we would want the torque production to happen for our towing application and it made good torque in fact over 500 foot pounds all the way out near 43 or 4400 rpm again in the sweet spot of where we would be using it for a tow application but <laughs> because we had the blower and had run it on our stock motor we decided hey let's take a look and see what happens if we put this little blower is this little blower this 174 blower enough to put on here and can we make it work and will it add any torque we hope it'll at least at least add some low speed power but maybe not not uh, you know climb real hard on the big end. But that's why we're on the dyno to find things out. What we did was add our little 174 blower, and look, we did indeed it did pretty well actually on this fairly mild big block Chevy. Um, peak power was up to 580 horsepower, so sporting some pretty good power. Nice flat torque curve peaking at 634 foot-pounds of torque. And for those guys who are interested, this was run, this this made a peak of 5.3 <laughs> PSI. Down low, it was at 3.9 PSI on the start of our load, down near 3,000 RPM. So small blower on a big block, not gonna make a lot of boost, but it did end up making pretty good power. So quite honestly, I drove around with this blower on this motor in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really fun. It was a tire turning machine. I actually never got to tow our race trailer with this combination because by the time this was all done and ready, we had the blower working and everything, we were already done racing. And but <laughs> this obviously was a good combination, very fun in the dually truck. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we stepped up to an even bigger blower. Okay, guys, we took a look at our NA buildup on our 468 big block Chevy and our <laughs> our hunt for grunt is what I called the, the, the magazine article way back in the day. We were looking for, you know, lots of torque because this was going to be a towing application, 437 horsepower on our NA combination, 542 foot pounds. But things really picked up when we added that 174 supercharger. Then we're going to take a look at the 420 blower on our 174. Uh, we had, and I wanted to bring this up because a lot of the blower guys will be asking, we ran a 2.24 drive ratio on this thing, and that basically was all the pulley combinations that we had. So that was as fast as we could spin the blower. You saw we were only running it out to 5,500 RPM because we're kind of past the power beat there. It went from 4 PSI on the load in to a peak of 5.3 PSI. And on the supercharge application, we ran 30 degrees of total timing compared to 36 degrees on the NA combination. And the blower was run with 91 octane, just like the NA motor, with just a splash of 100. We just wanted to make sure that it was safe on our first runs when we were doing this. Later on, we would run this thing in the vehicle with this blower on 91 octane. So it all worked out very well. But with a 2.24 drive ratio, we made a peak of 5.3 pounds and we couldn't go up and boost anymore. Also, the uh, NA combination was run with a 750 Holley and the supercharged combination was run with a 950 Holley because you want to have as much airflow going into the blower as you need. And obviously we had enough fuel flow to make the power that we made. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we stepped up in blower size. We stepped up to a 420. I think that this thing was called a mega blower back in the day. I don't even know if the supercharger is still available. Maybe it is. You guys let me know in the comments if it still is. But here's what happened when we stepped up to the bigger blower. Obviously, bigger blower made more power. It also made more boost. I'm going to go ahead and move this down just a little bit. You won't be able to see, but those are 5,500 RPM. You can kind of still see that. I just want to get it out of the way of the power curve so you can see. So we have our NA power curve, our 174 blower, and our 420 blower. And equipped with the 420 blower, we made 630 600, oh, no, here we go, 643 horsepower, and peak torque was up at 685 foot-pounds. So now we're just, oh, this thing was making some pretty good power. The interesting thing is we ran a a 56-tooth uh, uh, top or blower pulley and a 52-tooth lower crank pulley. This thing produced a peak of 6.4 PSI, so only 1.1 PSI more than the um, smaller blower did. 
yet it produced quite a bit more power. We added 59 horsepower by it basically increasing the boost uh, 1.1 PSI. So this blower obviously had more flow capacity. We know we've made way over 700 horsepower with this kind of blower. So we know that it has way more capacity compared to the 174. But we did run two 750 blower carbs on this thing, where we ran a single 950 on the smaller 174. We ran the blower carbs just out of the box, and this is not uncommon at all. We, when we run these blower carbs out of the box, we just put them on. They worked very well, and they have on many, many occasions. We've run these on uh, 671s and 871s, and these 750 blower carbs work very well. We Again, we ran this thing at 30, uh, 30 degrees of total timing on the blower. And this was a good combination, and a good combination for a number of reasons. First of all, it made quite a bit more power than the single carb 174 blower, but also it just looked better. <laughs> Having a bigger blower on there, you can see, I'll show you photos of the blower, it looked very good and also having two carburetors on there. So when you have a big, something that looks kind of like a 671 blower and you have two carburetors on there in the visual department, it looks very, very well. But we had run the 174 blower on there for a long time. It worked very well in the vehicle and we drove around a lot. You know, you have low boost. You're not gonna really get into detonation too much. You have charge cooling from the carburetor and it worked very well as driving around. I never got to drive the vehicle around with this bigger blower and two carburetors on it, but it would have been, or the, the truck like that. I did drive around the small blower and it worked very well. But this story isn't done yet because what we did after this is we made a hunt for even more grunt by taking this 454, taking it apart, making it a 496, putting a real camshaft in it and real cylinder heads and stepping up the boost even more. That's coming up in part two. Make sure to watch for that. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.